This is Max 7 tutorial number 3, Getting to Know Max, Your First Patcher. In the last tutorial, we set up Max to run on the computer, and um, now that it's all ready to go, we're just going to jump right in there and start on our first patcher, and in so doing, get to know this fantastic program called Max. We'll learn how to navigate around. But for this first, <clears throat> well, it's our third tutorial, but sort of for the, our first patcher, we're going to spend a lot of time with the very basic objects and how we save things and all that sort of very basic stuff. So this is the basic, let's make a patcher thing. So to make a new patcher, which is a file in Max, first off, make sure you're in Max. Secondly, go up to the, you can go up to the, oh great, uh, file, my computer slowed down a little bit today, file and select a new patcher, or you can just type command N on a Macintosh, and I believe that's control N on a PC. So if you're on a Mac, command N on a PC, control N, but go ahead, just click it, new patcher, and up pops a new patcher. Okay, and... Oh, come on, machine. We'll just zoom back out there. Okay. The first thing to do, as I'm sure you know, is to save your file. So let's immediately hit Save, which could be Command-S, or Save. Just go ahead and save. Now go find your folder where you said you would store everything and you, you promised. So now you have to do it. For me, um, this is in my Max Teaching Patchers folder. And if you recall from the last video, we set up our file preferences to find it. My file preferences can find it. And I have my own system, but I'm going to call this 03 because that's the title that I'm on. And then I'm going to um, you would put in your initials or your name or something to make it specific and you could just put your initials and then tutorial 3 but I have 03 it's going to be tutorial getting to know Max I'm, I'm all for long-winded uh, titles so we're going to save it now we see it up there tutorial getting to know Max fantastic we're all ready to go. So let's, um, I'm going to actually keep the max window small because it keeps the icons large. And then we'll zoom in so we can actually see what's, what's what here. So trying to zoom again on my poor computer, which is taking video at the same time that we're working in Mac. So that's why it runs so slow. So let's look at the, um, actually I'll get rid of my other max window real quick here because it's kind of distracting. There we go. Uh, sure, save. Go away. Okay, there we go. Back to our present window. Um, across the top of the max window, these are where all the objects reside that you use to make things with Max. Max is a programming environment, but it uses little graphical objects and this is where you get all of them. Along the left hand side here are all the files that you might want to use to um, put in there. Now we had mentioned the file browser. Hopefully you've run your file browser and it has scanned your computer. Oops, there's ours popping up bigger than life. You saw that little bar in there scanning. Sometimes that can go on for hours, but in here you can find all the stuff that you might want to use. It's sort of a quick way to find the files on your computer. More of that later. Um, and here's audio files, video files, uh, images, picture files, snippets. That's a new thing in Mac 7. That's just little chunks of code um, collections that you might want to put in there if you use them a lot. Down here, plugins, Visi, which are a certain kind of pre-made um, uh, object or machine 
beep which are also they're sort of like um, machines that are all ready to go for you that do specific functions in Max and down here your collections okay so these are all files that you might use um, with your Max patcher down here we have the lock and unlock button uh, patcher windows that you can see presentation mode I'll get to it later and to tell you the truth this stuff it's sort of like um, this tells you what mode your whoops this tells you what mode your windows in okay the most important two of these being the presentation mode button and this one the most important which is the lock unlock button I'll get to that in a second also over on this side the right hand side the east side if you will they have a calendar a new thing um, it's nice if you know what day that you worked on a certain object um, you can just go down here and find it I'm not sure why the 12th is lit up today's the 17th but um, maybe on the 12th I did something important let's see oh I completed a lesson I did sound collage just for fun I didn't really need to do it goodbye calendar um, these are the more important ones this is called the inspector and so anytime you have an object out there and you want to find out things about it um, this is similar to um, some Adobe software there's an inspector for certain objects this is reference which will um, sort of give you is sort of like the dictionary of messages you can send to objects and things uh, the max console and browse lessons we're not gonna <clears throat> For the most part get lessons from here but I will use it to open the window boom the window snaps open and here are the lessons that are available these are I don't want to say they're high level but they're higher level than we are right now we're just learning to make a patcher okay um, we can go up here to the uh, max console and <laughs> that's from my last patcher that I was working on so I'm going to push the X down here you can clear that um, this is just uh, show only when things are going wrong and this if you have selected an error will show you which object sent the error um, let's uh, move back over here and start with the object so this is the max console uh, we we'll call it the right hand navigation window so um, there's three distinct um, objects or uh, objects is confusing actually everything in Max is an object um, within those three it's sort of like fruits and vegetables I don't want to make it confusing but um, the more commonly used ones and the ones that are different are shown here so I'm gonna start uh, somewhat uh, backwards here and go right over here you see it says comment and there's a little C next to it that means that you can actually thank you for zooming so slowly machine you can just type C and you will get a comment box in your window if you have in fact clicked in your window I'm gonna type C again and there is a comment box and I'm going to just type in it comment box and that's mostly what comment boxes do they uh, let you sort of label things so they're useful with labeling uh, they don't really do much more than that they don't uh, they're just you know remind you of what stuff is good for labeling stuff okay one of the most used objects is a message and you can see that there's a little M lit up there so let's go click in our box again I'm gonna click right here below the comment box I'm going to type the letter M there I did and a message pop a message box pops up there it is and I'm going to type message in it very good and you can see that it doesn't really look like the comment box the comment box has this little outline it's completely transparent you can see the dots in your grid right through it the message box is gray it has rounded corners and you notice each time I mouse over these things the up oh, that's the result of a message these are the inlet and outlet 
inlets and outlets, let's leave it at that. So when there is data to come into a message, it can come in here and it can come in here. And the message itself goes out here. Okay, and you'll notice this comment box doesn't really have an outlet. That's because it doesn't really do anything, but it does have an inlet. You can change the comment. I'll show you how to do that later, but for now, let's just notice that they look a lot different. Now there's the third object is called the object. And as you can also see, there's a letter N there. And so if we just come down here and type the letter N, a very different shape comes up and it's it's rectangular with sharp corners it has a top and a bottom that are lighter gray and the middles a darker gray um, both the comment box and the message box are nice in that you can type in them what they are but an object box does things and there's only a few object boxes that have the word object in them so I can't just label it object box. I'll have to use the comment box to label the object box an object. Okay, but um, so let's make a different object here. We'll make the uh, metronome, which you get by typing metro. Okay, um, it has this, uh, Max has an autofill function, so as soon as you see the thing that you want, you can just, uh, if it's selected, you can just hit return and you'll get it, or you can hit spacebar. If you hit the spacebar, type in Metro, hit spacebar, and then you get the next thing which says arguments. And the arguments um, can be put in here a number of different ways. One is to just sort of start with it. So in the case of a metronome, this is going to be a number of milliseconds. So let's type milliseconds means one one thousandth of a second so let's type one thousand and that will get us one second somewhere in the future okay so that's the argument here here's our object it's a metronome and here is our argument is one thousand okay I'm just gonna leave them here for a minute so the comment box a message box and an object, okay? Comment boxes are mostly for labeling things. Message boxes are to send specific messages. Objects perform a function. Between their inlet and their outlet, something happens. You say, do the thing that you're supposed to do, and out will come the thing that they're supposed to do. So these are your three main um, types of object that you'll see on your screen all the time. Now that said, there's a bunch of objects that have their own uh, graphic user interface and we can move to them right over here. So already we've had the object, the message, and the comment. And here they are. And right here, this is called a toggle. And again, you can see you can just type a T. I'm going to do that but I'm going to move down here near my metronome and I'm going to type the letter T. Okay. And I'm going to move the metronome down the page a little bit. And line it up. And so now we're going to get to do something that we haven't gotten to do yet, which is we are going to connect two things. So I have a toggle here and a metronome and I'm going to connect them by clicking on its output and dragging this is a patch cord and I'm going to connect it to the metronome to its inlet now this brings up another um, point about uh, objects in Max you notice I connected it to the left inlet and suddenly we get this uh, start, st uh, well I can't go over there in mouse um, because, to show you, but because then it goes away, but it says start and stop metronome. And indeed that is exactly what will happen when we activate this object someday later in this 
tutorial. Um, generally speaking, the left hand inlet is sort of the activating inlet of an object, and the right hand inlet will receive data, but it doesn't activate it. So until you activate the left hand side, the right hand side will store things, in, uh, data comes in, doesn't do anything until you activate it with the left hand side. And then as soon as you do, something's going to come out the bottom. What, pray tell, will it be? Well, in this case, a metronome just puts out a thing called a bang, which also happens to be our next object. This is a button, also known as a bang, and um, it we can I believe just drag it down here if we want or we can type B just like it said okay um, how can we find out what a button does well there it is and I'm gonna move my comment box up a little bit here and I'm gonna put my button over here over the right hand side of my message and I'm going to connect them and now I'm gonna do uh, something that you're going to uh, this is a kind of a shortcut you'll want to be able to do this you can either type another B or you can click on something right in the middle Hold down your Option key and duplicate it. Okay, so you can either type B, which would give you another button. You can hold the Option key down and click on it and duplicate it, or you could probably copy and paste it or anything like that. Okay, so um, we are going to need a way to see what these things are doing. I'm going to zoom out here and we're going to learn the other thing about Max. Okay, so right now we're editing, we're putting things together, but what we want it, but when we want them to actually do something, then we're going to have to lock the patcher and put it in run mode. So I'm just going to click on lock right now and you'll see that everything kind of changes. Everything gets a little cleaner. There's not, right? So now, if I click on these, you'll see that they get a little light there. And now, watch closely when I click on this one. The word changes to bang. The right inlet of a message is the one that tells the message box what's inside it. And every time you click on this thing, it's actually sending out literally bang um, and then this when I click on it will send that out where will it send it out to well we don't have anywhere for it to go yet but we'll we'll deal with that in a minute so and our metronome very excitingly has a toggle on the top now we've turned our metronome on but it doesn't do anything yet and now we've turned it off. So when we're in the run mode, um, things are actually functioning. And now you'll notice when I unlock it or put it in the patching mode, editing mode, okay, it's unlocked. We get all these options came back and everything uh, lights up again. And now instead of, um, I can't turn the toggle on, it just moves. I can select it, but I can't turn it on. So there's two different modes going on here. There's um, editing mode and run mode. You could also say like patching mode and running mode. And then, um, so you're using those to, to have a different sort of uh, state of affairs here. And then we also have, um, once the objects are hooked up, we need something for them to do here. So we're back to editing mode and let's uh, see if we can um, have these do something more interesting. 
In the case of the metronome, it's often useful just to see what it is doing. Um, and if we want to, we can just type the letter B again and connect it the bottom, the outlet, okay, output ticks of metronome, and that's just going to go to a button, okay. Let's lock our patcher, and you can also do that by hitting Command E. I, I get kind of tired of mousing over there, so I really like to just use the key commands. So I Command E, I lock it, push on the toggle, and you'll notice that 1,000 is about one second. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. So our metronome is right now working. What is it doing? Well, it's just sending a bang out, and this is banging on this uh, button. Um, do we have some other possibilities that we could do with that? Yes, absolutely. Um, we can send, we can make a new object by typing the letter N. And this is going to be a print object. So let's type the word print. And then hit the space bar. And just give it a name. Um, let's call it print um, Andy. We'll start at the beginning of the alphabet. OK, Andy. So print Andy, and we'll connect it with a patch cord. And now our metronome, which is still running, we can see that, is printing Andy in our Max console. Okay, So when you print something, it goes over to the Max console. I'm going to lock my patcher and turn the metronome off and you see it stopped printing Andy. I'm going to clear this from printing Andy and then we can watch it as we turn it on. Bang, bang, bang. Okay. Um, why did I have it print Andy? Well, because perhaps um, we might have two print objects and we want to know the difference between them, right? So let's just say back in my patcher over here, unlocking it again. I'm going to make another print object. I'll push the letter N and I'll say print um, Betty. Okay. And connect the bottom of our message here to Betty. Okay. And um, just for fun, let's put another message up here. Uh, let's put a few messages up here. Type the letter M and type hello. Oh, don't, don't, don't. People often say hello world on their first, uh, their first programming problem. So hello world. Um, and uh, we'll make another one that says goodbye just for evenness. And then we can connect them down to the right hand inlet of the message box, just like that. OK. Let's lock our patcher and take a look at that real quick. So if we push hello world, now this message says hello world. And if we push this, it says goodbye. And if we push this, it says bang. OK, so these are message boxes up here. Message box here. This is an object. It's a print object. This is a button sometimes called a bang, and another button, the left outlet. Now, did you notice when I pushed Hello World, it didn't do anything over here? Absolutely nothing. That's because this message box never output it. Do you remember what I said about the right inlet and the left inlet? If you 
send something in the right inlet, it's stored in the message box, but it doesn't print until you either click on the message box, here we go, boom, and Betty prints hello world. We know that Betty printed it because it says Betty. Andy, did, Andy was not responsible for this. Okay, and goodbye. Again, it didn't print unless we go and click here, goodbye. And then you see it print right there in the Max console. Okay, if we wanted to print it again, we can just click on the left inlet here and send it a bang, bang, goodbye. Okay, so hello, bang, goodbye, bang, bang, bang. So that's important to understand how that works. The right inlet can receive the data. The left inlet, no matter, no, not, ab not in an absolute sense, there is a way to get around this, but for the most part, if you hit this on the left hand side, it will just activate the message box and the message box will output its data and print, will print it named Betty in the Max console. Okay, so now we can say hello world and we get the hello, here we'll clear it here and uh, we'll, you know, hello world and we can either print it here or we can just send it a bang. We can say goodbye, send it a bang, we can say bang and send it out to be printed. And of course um, we can also have something do it for us. So let's unlock our, hello, let's unlock our patcher. I'm gonna clear that just so you can see this when it actually works. And we can take the bangs from the metronome and oh I need to tell you what I'm doing here I'm using segmented patch chords just a second I will tell you what that is in a second um, up here there's an there's an option and if you click it open you'll see segmented patch chords Right now, you probably don't have that selected, so when you try to drag a, I'll show you, when you try to drag a patch cord around, it just does this. It sort of follows your, your uh, thing around, and you know, um, and we could put it anywhere. And then there it is, which for me is a little bit too messy. Of course, you could then straighten it out by, um, hitting uh, command Y. I just happen to know this and not to show off or anything, but it, I do. Um, or I'm just going to delete it. Um, you could click segmented patch chords, which I prefer to use because I'm kind of a neat freak when it comes to, to uh, laying out my max patches. And then you can just click, 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 click. Now there is a problem with the segmented patch chords and I'm sure you probably have already realized what it is. If you accidentally make a segmented patch chord and then you decided you don't want to connect it to anything, it's really hard to get rid of. Um, and the way that you do get rid of it is either connect it to something and then delete it or just hold the command key down and click and the whole thing will disappear. Okay. So that's how I made this nice patch cord here. And you can see that once you make a patch cord, you can kind of move them around anyway if you don't like where they are. Okay, but back to where we were. We now have a metronome that we can turn on and it's going around here and activating this message box, which is going to print at Betty. And this one is going to print at Andy. So let's just watch what happens. Bang, 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 bang. But we can change the message here to hello world. And now it's bang, hello world, bang, hello world, bang, hello world. Pretty exciting. Um, and uh, we'll clear that again. It just uh, will go on filling the Max console uh, forever. So we can make it goodbye. 
oh, this is, just seems so much more tragic now. Bang, goodbye, bang, goodbye, bang, goodbye. And we can do it. Hello, world. Goodbye, world. Bang, goodbye. And the nice thing is that we can see who's responsible for all this chitter-chatter over here because we've named our print objects. So this is just a basic way to kind of get started with um, Max again. I'm going to un... Oops. Just by the way, to unlock and lock your patcher, if you're using the key command, you have to click in the patcher first to activate it, then Command E. Now it's back in patching mode, and you can just uh, drag a rectangle over it. Select everything that you want, and hit Delete, and then go back to the thing that you want to remind somebody of, which is M, message box and let's see if I can cheat on this one and just call it an object. Typing is so slow. Okay, well, I don't get to, uh, there we go. Oh, well, it's a good lesson though. So this is an object, this is a max object box, and this is what happens when you type something in it that it doesn't recognize, that it thinks is just utter gibberish. Okay, so there's no such thing as an object named an object, right? You might remember that our thing was called a metro, and now we'll see that it'll turn black again, especially once we give it an argument. Okay, so here it is, just going over the comment box, the message box, and the object. And those are your three main components in Max, and we'll get into some other graphical um, user interfaces in the next tutorial. Thanks for listening. Patch well. Save this as 03, and we'll be back to do 04. Okay.